answer to. I'm half crazy, all for the love of you. It won't be a stylish marriage. I can't afford a carriage, but you'll look sweet. Hello. Cuban writer here, and I wanted to briefly address the recent controversy surrounding advertisers on YouTube. Now, in the past, commercials used to appear on YouTube without regard to the content of the channel or the particular video that was being shown. It was generally understood that when advertisers advertise with YouTube, they were advertising with YouTube. They were not uh, linking themselves philosophically or ideologically with whatever content happened to be playing at any given time. That content might draw in the eyeballs to the advertisement, but there was no other assumed link between the two. Now, recently, there was a news expose that pointed out that popular brands' advertisements might appear uh, on videos or next to videos that uh, had controversial content or content that seemed hateful and so the advertisers, uh, not wanting to be negatively associated in this way, they went ahead and they pulled their advertisements until such a time as YouTube could guarantee that their advertisements wouldn't appear next to anything that could potentially harm their brand image. Now, this puts YouTube in the same boat as any other uh, TV channel or publication throughout history that had to worry about what its content was to keep the advertisers happy. This is a great blow to those people who really valued the free speech environment on YouTube where they felt that any idea that people were interested in would win even if it happened to be controversial or unpopular. But I think this is just an inevitable evolution of the platform. Once money was introduced to YouTube, it became inevitable that money would be used as a lever to influence the content on YouTube. Once you have money, that money is going to be used to control you. That's the same thing with politics, it's the same thing with media, and it's the same thing with new media. But I don't think this is necessarily a reason to panic, because I think the sensibilities of major corporations are not going to be the same as the sensibilities of smaller corporations. A small company who just wants to get its product in front of a lot of eyeballs isn't going to worry as much about being associated with uh, a neo-Nazi as uh, a big company will be. And I think there will become different tiers of advertising service and time once YouTube figures out its its system better. They're still growing. They're like children. They only introduce, introduced monetization a short time ago in the grand scheme of things. So I think there'll eventually be uh, multiple tiers of advertising. There'll be a tier for people who don't care what the content is. It'll probably be cheaper. And their advertising will appear wherever on good, wholesome websites or, or videos and also on terrible, unwholesome videos. And they're going to take the new view that uh, people aren't going to really associate them with this unless they're trying to push a political agenda. And new viewers, young people who grew up with the internet, generally understand how things work. And they understand that advertisers aren't linking themselves philosophically with these negative videos any more than they're linking themselves with the positive videos. So I expect to see uh, more advertising tiers for different kinds of corporate customers. I also expect to see new video services pop up to take advantage of this opportunity to challenge YouTube's supremacy in the field of uh, online video service. And as more competition enters the field and more sophistication enters the field, things will improve. Uh, I don't see this so much as a war as just watching an evolution occur. And I think if the YouTubers of today just manage to stick it out for a while longer, they'll soon see that there are more options and that YouTube itself will readjust its policies 
to allow for many different kinds of advertisers with many different kinds of needs so that those of you who produce controversial content, and I may even be among them because of some of my thoughts videos, uh, you will have advertisers for you too. There are going to be growing pains. You just have to hold on tight and get through it. If maybe that means you have to make a few less videos uh, in, and maybe get an alternative source of income. Maybe, maybe some of you will push the Patreon a little bit harder or sell products. Whatever you've got to do to get through the interim period, go ahead and do it because new frontiers are going to open up. The market always responds to need. And right now, a lot of you who are losing revenue still have eyeballs. As long as you keep those eyeballs, there will always be an incentive to send advertisers your way. Those are my thoughts on the issue, and thank you for listening. See you next time. But you'll look sweet upon the seat of a bicycle built for two. Give me your answer too.